Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Here I'm going to show you how to make upwards of 600 horsepower without using port injection in your N54 powered BMW. Is there anyone out there who wants to go fast? Anybody? The way that a lot of people make high horsepower is by adding port injection into their motor so they can pump more fuel into their engine. What I'm going to do is spin my high pressure fuel pump three times faster. This will allow me to target high boost while using E85. Keep in mind I have eBay 19T turbos and all supporting mods to create high horsepower so results will vary. But before we get to that I was having problems with my high pressure fuel pump. We've got to do something. So I'm going to show you what symptoms we have and how we fix it by changing to a new high pressure fuel pump. One of the biggest symptoms you might have is your car might go into limp mode and I'll go over these codes towards the end of the video. Next when driving and letting off the throttle you can monitor the rail pressure dropping below 250 psi and also when letting off the throttle and coasting it can bounce between 700 psi and 1200 psi uncontrollably. Another symptom I would have is rough idles on cold mornings and one of the main symptoms I notice with everyday driving is a little bit of hesitation in between shifts. So if any of those symptoms are symptoms that you are experiencing maybe it's time for a new high pressure fuel pump and while you're changing out the high pressure fuel pump you might as well add the spool helix overdrive so you can make big horsepower that's a really good idea yes yes it is so let's go ahead and get started with disassembly first move the engine cover remove the c-clip hole in the charge pipe unplug the sensor on the charge pipe and on top of the intake manifold loosen the charge pipe Using an 11 millimeter socket, you can remove the nuts holding on the intake manifold. On the bottom of the throttle body, there is a connector. Push the little pin, and it comes disconnected. On the side of the throttle body, there is a vacuum line. Pinch the sides of it, and it'll come out. Unplug your oil pressure switch. And at this point, you should be able to disconnect your charge pipe and remove your intake manifold. But I'm going to remove the studs in mine to make removing the intake manifold easier. But this is not necessary. And now you can see all of your intake valves and this would be a good time for walnut blasting. And before you do anything with fuel, you need to make sure to unplug the battery cables in the trunk. Only you can prevent forest fires. So let's go ahead and get started. You can unplug the power cables from the fuel pump. Unplug the low pressure fuel sensor. You need a little pick tool in there to unplug that. Unplug the starter. And then there's going to be these little Allen heads on here on the stock fuel pump. Three Allen heads. You need to remove that and then you'll remove the high pressure fuel line. And that's how to remove the stock pump. And then we'll pull out the Helix Overdrive and I can show you guys that. Now that the fuel pump is loosened up, you can unbolt the high pressure fuel line. Next we can unbolt the low pressure fuel line. I'm going to stuff rags in here again just so it collects the fuel. These are both 17 millimeter wrenches. And this is that extra brace that is sold with the overdrive kit. Then you can finish unbolting the fuel pump. And your disassembly will be similar even if you don't have the Helix Overdrive yet. Here we have the Helix Overdrive kit that is connected to the high pressure fuel pump. The kit will come with two longer bolts and one shorter bolt. So here is the actual Helix Overdrive. There is the part number H3790. And what this does is normally your fuel pump would be on here. This is connected to the timing chain or one of the drive chains. And as this spins one time, one time, one time, it's pumping a certain amount of PSI into your high pressure fuel system. Oh, it sounds boring to me. What this does is when the chain spins one time, it's actually spinning the inside here three times. That's much better, don't you think? Oh, much better, sir. I agree with you there. Spin it one time. And you see how much faster the inside is spinning. So that in turn will make this guy spin three times faster, providing that much more fuel. There are some tuning changes you need to make to run this. But the biggest benefit is it's very minimal tuning changes. So we go ahead and get ready to put on the new high pressure fuel pump. This is so exciting. 
I'm so excited right now. So here's the new fuel pump. Same exact as the old one. It is a BMW fuel pump. Part number 7613933-05. But one thing we need to do when running the Helix is remove this filter on the inside here. Take a little pick tool. Just like that. This is because we installed a Micron filter in line. That will be way better than that, and that will actually restrict fuel. So we'll start connecting things together. Put a little bit of oil on this gasket. It really only goes together one way. So it clicks in, then you can spin it. You can put in your bolts like that. Get ready to install it back into the car. So now you can go ahead and install Helix Overdrive. I'm adding a little bit of blue Loctite to the main bolts. When you buy the Helix Overdrive, it will come with this vacuum pump cover. So you will have to change this out. The old one was cracking from the weight of the overdrive. So spool release this, and then they release this bracket that goes right here. So you will have to install that. Then you want to make sure that's lined up with the vacuum pump. They are nice and tight. Now you can install the bolt into this extra bracket. Then you can reinstall your high pressure fuel line and tighten both fuel lines. You can plug everything back in. Just like that, you've got the Helix installed on your car. It does come with a new fuel line. You want to purchase the Micron filter from Spool, and then I got the ethanol analyzer also. Keep in mind when you're reinstalling the low pressure fuel line, you do have to bend it around since adding the Helix moves the high pressure fuel pump towards the rear of the vehicle. So let's go ahead and reinstall the intake manifold and make sure you replace the gaskets while you're doing this. I want you to install this little baby right about there. Next, we need to install this vacuum line into the throttle body, and then there will be the throttle body plug right here. And don't forget to plug in the map sensor on top of the intake manifold. This is the sensor that is used to measure vacuum, and also plug in the map sensor that is on the charge pipe. And that's the sensor that actually measures your actual boost. Before you do the charge pipe, you want to bolt in the intake manifold. That way it's all bolted on nice and straight, and then you can do the charge pipe. And then you've got the nuts that you need to put on the intake manifold. So you can go ahead and get that started. Try not to drop anything that can be difficult to find under the intake manifold. Start in the middle and work your way out. These get torqued down to 15 Newton meters. And then I always do it once more. It says I'm supposed to check it twice. Make sure you got this O-ring inside here. If you haven't changed it out, I definitely would change it. And always expect a little bit of oil to be inside the charge pipe. If you haven't cleaned off the sensor, you can clean this off now. Good opportunity. So it wiggles on, and then you take your clip. Snaps on and holds on. Even with it clipped on, the charge pipe can still wiggle around a little bit. That's normal. Tighten up your hose clamp. Plug in your other sensor here. Plug in the sensor up top. Don't forget to plug in your blow off valve. Don't forget to plug in the sensor on top of your oil filter housing. Then you can get ready to start her up. Get in the car and start her up. See how she runs. All right, hey. All right, good job, guys. And make sure to check for any fuel leaks. Okay, now we can go for a test drive. 
All right, I would definitely say changing the high pressure fuel pump fixed all of my issues. Every time I let off the throttle, the rail pressure, PSI, would literally fluctuate from 250 all the way up to 1200, just go back and forth. That's not good, it's not supposed to do that. So I would definitely say changing it out fixed that issue and the car actually is smoother driving. In between shifts, the rail pressure would drop so low that it would be kind of jerky when you're starting off. So overall, um, very happy that that was the fix that was required. I definitely say that I'm happy with the fact that changing the fuel pump did fix all of those issues. I mean, I was having a couple different uh, check engine lights. High pressure fuel. So this is 2FCA and 2FDA were both active. Another one, 29F1, another 2FCA. So this is telling me that the fuel pump was going bad. Looks like it's been going bad since November, looks like. So overall, I would say this is not a hard fix. It is expensive fix. Luckily buying things through FCP, I did have a lifetime warranty on it. So I would definitely recommend checking out FCP Euro or finding some place with a lifetime warranty. With the Helix Overdrive Kit, I definitely uh, am happy with it. Some uh, major benefits of having that is that you don't need to tune an additional set of injectors that would require a tuning box, different tuning program to actually set those up. With the Helix Kit, you are only tuning your regular set of injectors. You can use the same program. The actual BMW DME is what controls all the fueling still. So that's one thing that I like about that. Also, it's easier for me to tune. I'm not a professional tuner, but it's easier for me to learn one platform at a time. So tuning just the DME from the BMW is a lot easier than trying to learn a new tuning software. So that's one major benefit. The other thing to say is if you're only running 91 octane, you really don't need the Helix. The reason you need to use the Helix with E85 is it takes, let's say, 30% more volume of E85 to get into your engine than it would 91 to make the same horsepower or to make more horsepower. So the fuel pump needs to actually pump that much more into your system. And then when you're running 91, you can't run as high of boost. And if you're running lower boost, you don't need as much fuel. When you turn up the actual boost, then you need to add more fuel to keep the air ratio a good level, let's say 12 AFR when running E85. That means you're running so much more fuel because you have so much more air density in the actual cylinder. So when you're running higher boost, there's actually more compressed air in there, so you need more fuel also. So that's why the Helix is a nice addition when you're running the E85 and you just want more boost, more fuel. Also, if you notice your rail pressures are getting a little bit low, at 1500 is usually the lowest I like to go. If you start to see that, then getting the Helix overdrive will keep that fuel pressure higher. That way you can safely run that amount of boost. Because the first thing that happens when your rail pressure gets low is your AFR is going to start to go higher, meaning you're going to be running lean, meaning you're going to have less fuel pumping into your pistons. That can cause knock, premature detonation. That can also cause your pistons to get hot, it can burn your pistons the top of them. It can destroy your motor, essentially. So that is why, even if your car feels like it runs fine, you got to keep an eye on the AFR, keep an eye on your fuel pressures, keep an eye even on your low pressure fuel system. If that's not pushing enough fuel, it doesn't matter what your rail pressure can do. If your low pressure isn't keeping up, it's going to run the injectors dry. It's going to run that system up front dry. That makes sense. Got to keep an eye on it, you know. So overall, those are some of the main things you need to look out for when installing the Helix Overdrive system or simply tuning your car. If you guys are interested in seeing some of the changes in Tuner Pro, leave a comment to let me know if you're interested. And again, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.